hates me. Um, well, obviously. So, I had a very depressing uh, video diary entry last, or earlier today. And, um, yeah, sorry about that. Well, I guess I don't really have anything to be sorry for because I'm the only one who is going to be watching these things. So, but anyway, I went through and talked about the whole thing that happened with Steven and everything. And I was kind of out of it. So, so anyway, it is... Uh, it just turned to uh, September 12th, and it's 12.04 a.m. right now. Um, watching Sex and the City, if you can tell. <laughs> anyway, I'm trying to, uh, I'm going to be doing diary, or video diaries instead of, um, instead of written diaries for a while, because I just... Unless I'm like, dry. unless I'm on a trip or something, then I'll write in the dirt. If I'm at home, I mean, I have no reason not to do a video diary instead because it's easier to talk about stuff for me and it's faster and I feel more justified that way. You know, if I'm talking. Um, anyway, yeah. Uh, so I guess to continue from the whole thing from earlier, I guess, you know, yeah, after I went through that whole spiel with, about Steven and his stuff, I, um, went and took like a five or six hour nap because I was so fucking tired. Um, I've just been really depressed lately. I haven't been feeling very well. I've been fighting off a sinus infection, a really bad one, so. Yeah, I didn't even know I was that sick, honestly. But I mean, given everything that's happened to me lately, I just. I guess so. Um, everything that's been happening to me lately, I guess. I can understand why my body is said to just crash. Um. <coughs> it's water. It's not vodka. Don't worry. Anyway. I always want to be able to drink it like that. And mixing vodka with Percocet and Ativan and Oxycontin is not a good idea. And Gabapin. And, um, Effexor. And antibiotics. Anyway, my doctor decided to put me on a 24 day course of Abogmentin, which has been making me feel like shit. On top of feeling like shit. Basically, I went to the doctor last week, and she decided, and uh, they took my temperature, which they never do that, so I was surprised. I really, I mean, I guess it was kind of a fluke, because they never take my temperature, so if they hadn't have taken my temp, if I hadn't have been late that day, um, which I happened to sleep in, because I was... I ended up sleeping in and missing, almost missing my appointment. I like took a nap because I hadn't been feeling good for like a couple weeks and uh, like just been feeling awful, like not hungry, feeling just like my head had been killing me and my sinuses have been killing me, face had been killing me, so. Yeah, I uh, hadn't been feeling good, and I've been, I'd been really, really, really tired. 
on top of everything else, but I thought it was just because of everything that had happened with Stephen and everything else. And, you know, basically, you know, I got the shit under the stick this week, this month, this past month in August. Um, everything pretty much came crashing down on me. And I honestly don't know how much, how much longer I'm going to have my apartment. Um, because... I can't even get an interview to save my life. Um, and the recruiter that... And the recruiter that that hired me for that stupid job at Baragon, he won't talk to me anymore, which, I mean, I guess I don't... I can understand why, because I went off on him. And then I pretty much extorted 300 extra dollars off of my paycheck because I submitted 40 hour paycheck when I only work 16 or 40 hour week work week. We only work 16 and then I guess the manager overlooked it. Either that or I, I don't know. I have no idea what happened there, but I got 300 extra dollars on my paycheck, which I felt was fair given everything that had happened. But Anyway, I guess just to cut this story short, um, early in August, like about a month ago actually, so all this has happened in about a month's time, um, about a month ago, I, um, my friend Danita, who I've been friends with for, since high school. And, um, I'm going to try not to cry because I never, I really don't want to cry again. And, uh, I'm going to try to work on not being drama, you know, like this. Well, I guess, all right, this is the only place that I'm going to really unleash everything because, you know, the, after what Steven's friend Corinne told me that I'm a drama queen or whatever it you know, she told me that I'm over dramatic, and then Steven told me I'm over dramatic, and then also Jeremy told me I'm over dramatic. Jeremy, my friend from high school, he said, Oh, you, yeah, you are kind of a drama, over dramatic, dear, blah, blah, blah. I was like, Thanks. I've had a lot of shit happen to me this month. Uh, so, what do you think? So basically, yeah, so about a month ago, my friend Danita, I just told you about, she passed away. I was, you know, having a grand old time at my friend's house, uh, you know, doing, uh, at her 31st birthday party, Valerie, and, uh, and uh, I was having a great time over there. And I got a call from Jeremy, Jeremy Mays, who I've been friends with for as long as Danita. And he told me that she was in a coma and that she wasn't expected to make it. Well, I mean, this kind of stuff has never happened to me before, so I honestly didn't, you know, at the time. I mean, of course, I went up and saw her the next day and all this stuff, and uh, she just, she was laying in the bed and in the hospital, and I broke down when I saw her. It was really sad. It was the last time I saw her. Yeah, I just, my friends, my friend uh, Valerie, she's like, oh, you should call Steven and, and ask him if, to come over or something. Give me some, give me some support. I was like, oh, I don't think he's going to want to do that. She's like, why wouldn't he want to do that? I was like, oh, I just don't, I just don't think he would. 
And then she kept bugging me. She's like, did you call him? Did you call him? And I was like, hello. Finally decided to call him, you know, after I got home from her house. And I was like, would it be cool if I came over tomorrow after I see my friend? Because I'm probably going to be upset about it. Probably going to be kind of upset. And I think I need some support. I never got to see him anyway. Like, I got to see him maybe once a week. So, not very often. And he was like, Well, um, yeah, sure, that's fine. Yeah, we can do that. So anyway, I saw Dania. And I really, you know, like, I thought she was going to get better. I really didn't think that she was going to pass away. Because that's never happened to me in my life before. I was just like, you know, of course she's not going to pass away. She's 20, she's, you know, 30, 29, 30 years old. I think she just turned 30, like, a couple months ago. In, like, in April. I was like, oh, there's no way she's going to die. She's going to pull through, you know. She, I, I was like, yeah, of course she's going to be in a coma and she a little bit, but she'll probably pull out of it. Probably be fine. I really didn't think she was going to be okay. I, I knew I had a, you know, like, I, I don't know, I thought she was going to be okay, and then the next thing I knew, I came over at Stephen's house, and, you know, we're hanging out, we're having a good time. And he's joking around, he's telling me, he's trying to Anyway, he's trying to cheer me up, and I, I was cheered up. I thought I didn't feel better being over at his house. And then I got a call from Jeremy, and, and they said, well, they did the brain scan, and, and she's 100% brain dead. And um, so that just broke me. It just made me really upset. And, um, so then Stephen tried to joke around. You know, I told him what happened. And, well, actually, he did come over right after Jeremy got off the phone with me and he, he gave me, he cut, you know, he held me. Um, and he was right in front of his mom, so it was kind of uncomfortable, but at the same time, I, you know, I was so upset that I didn't really care that much, but anyway, I, they were, Jeremy told me that they were going to pull the plug the next day, so I let her die naturally, and Um, I don't really remember, I think, um, I don't really remember much of that week, but I believe I did call in sick that day, the next day, I think that was, I think I did call in sick that day, no wait, no I didn't. That was on the weekend, right? Yeah, I did go to work that day. So, I, um, yeah, I did go to work that day, but I went home early. So I just, I felt so sick. Um, and then... Statement. And then, I don't remember, the rest of the week was kind of a blur, but I somehow missed two and a half day, days of work. I believe I did go back over to Stevens on Tuesday, you know, and you know, I just wanted him to be there for me and he wasn't there. He wasn't emotionally there for me. He just kind of 
you know, kind of pass it off as a I really don't even remember how we got to taking the break, but I think I think he just I think we just you know, I got upset at him or something happened, I don't we ended up getting in a fight or something. And uh I think I think obviously I'm sure it was along the lines of the whole thing that he wasn't being supportive at all through my friend's death. He wasn't being there for me. So I, I got upset with him and uh, I was just like, you know what? If he's not going to be there for me, then why don't I just take a break for a little, for a few days just to, you know, try to deal with this on my own so that I can um, get over it and we can get back to our relationship because obviously he doesn't want to be there for me so that, that was my line of thinking you know i was like obviously he feels like it's not fair to him that i have to be so clingy and body blah, blah so i guess i'll just cut it off for a few days and we'll just get back to it when i'm better so Anyway, so then I took a break for a few days, or I told him I wanted a break and he got really upset with me. I was just like, okay. So I took a few days and we didn't talk. And then, you know, a few days later, I talked to him and a few days later I tried to call him. You know, he didn't even answer the phone. And, uh, he just, he didn't even answer the phone. So, I think it was after 9, when he gets off work. It's like 9.30. It's like, I'm not off work yet, I'll text you when I get off. And then he texted me. We never talked on the phone. And uh, he just, he said, he's like, yeah. I was like, I can't remember. I don't remember because I don't want to go into my phone right now. I don't want to open up that wound again <sighs> but anyway basically we got to the point we were talking through text the whole time and he's like yeah I just think we shouldn't I just think we're better off as friends and I was like are you serious and I was just like wow what, what the fuck dude like really and, um, you know, basically that happened, so, and then in the same week as that happened, um, we're fighting, like, all week, and, um, about it, because I was like, you know, you, you haven't been supportive of me at all, and all this stuff, and I just felt like he wasn't. And then, um, so yeah, in the same week, my manager at Baraton got together with me and told me that I, uh, wasn't good enough, basically, that, you know, that I wasn't good enough, you know personality-wise or work-wise. He told me that I was not a bully, that he expected me to, but that he, want, you know, insinuated that I should be a bubbly, you know, you know, enthusiastic, outgoing person, 
I'm just not that type of person. Doesn't mean that it's not that it's doesn't mean that it's not okay. It's just I'm not. But you telling me that, you know, kind of hurt. And then he's like, well, if I if somebody held me at gunpoint right now and asked me whether or not I would hire you, I'd, I'd have to say no. And then he told me, he's like, well, it may not be today or tomorrow or even next week, but, you know, if you don't pick up the pace, we're not going to hire you or something like that. And I was like, you know, I gave him a speech and I was just like, you know, I do want to be here. I do want to work harder. And, you know, if I, if you have any problems with me, just let me know. Please let me know so I can fix it. Because I do want to get better. And he's like, okay. And that. So I was like. All right, well, I felt a little bit better, at least more secure in my job, until he fired me five days later before I even had a chance to, uh, before I even had a chance to follow up with him, which I told him that I would next week. I told him I'd follow up with him next, in a week, which was supposed to be on Wednesday, and he fired me on Tuesday night. I just thought that was fucked up. So. Yeah, in a matter of like three weeks. Um, I lost my friend. I lost who I thought was like the love of my life. Honestly, I did. I thought Steven and I were like soulmates. I really did because I thought we were like perfect together. And then, so yeah, I lost my friend. I lost one of my best friends from high school to death. I lost my, who I thought was my soulmate. And the week after that, and then the week after that, I lost my job. And now I've been struggling to find another job. And it's been awful. And, uh, you know, Stephen doesn't understand that I'm going through a lot. I think he would feel the same way if he had that kind of stuff happen to him. But he's never had that kind of, he's never had that before. He's never been, he's never been at the point that I am at, that I am right now. You know, he's always had security in his life. He doesn't have to pay huge, large sums of money. He has his mom, you know. His mom lives with him. So, I mean, if he loses his job, it's not the end of the world. They're not gonna be kicked out on the street. She'll find a, she'll either find a job or something, you know, he doesn't pay that much in rent anyway, so it's not, you know, he obviously makes enough money to be able to buy stuff online every other day or whatever, you know, how often do I spend money online, never, the only things I buy online are songs, that are like a dollar and then books that are like less than ten dollars and that's like once a month maybe I see that he you know like he's showing when he was showing me his uh, early stuff he showed me this pair of, he got this pair of, of like platform heels or whatever the hell they were in the mail you know, when is he going to wear that stuff? For one thing, you know, like, it's not even practical. Is he going to use it? No, not really. Was he going to go trampsing around, traipsing around town wearing platform heels and makeup and 
dresses and shit. No. So, like, he, he's buying this stuff that he doesn't even need. So I found that kind of ridiculous. I was like, really? They are 55 bucks? Yeah, they were on sale. What? Okay. Well. Okay. Not only that, but he already has a bunch of pairs of girl shoes. So it's not like, you know, he could fucking have all my shoes that I have. I have a bunch of girly shoes that I never wear. I only wear like two pairs of shoes. I'm not a girly girl. If you, I mean, obviously you know that, but, um, you know, I'm really not a girly girl. I'm very practical. In fact, I'm wearing a fucking t-shirt right now. You know, I am actually wearing makeup right now. It's kind of wearing off, but I, I don't hardly ever wear makeup. The only reason I wore makeup today was because I went to a shitty interview with Massage Envy. But I highly doubt I'm even going to get that job, and I'm pretty sure that um, it's only part time anyway, so it really isn't anything to write home about. So, um, yeah, I'm going to keep these at half an hour, and, uh, because otherwise they'll just last forever. I won't be talking for hours on end. So, I have three minutes left. Um, but yeah, anyway, so Stephen just totally. has a lot of extra money. I don't. I don't have a lot of extra money. I have money. To, I mean, I don't even know how, where my rent's going to be coming from next month. I'm probably going to have to, like, expedite move out of my apartment or something. I don't know. I, mean, I really don't know what to do. I've been trying to find jobs. I had six jobs last night. I had two, like, five jobs the night before. And then I've been applying to jobs all week and the week before. I got one call back, and it was from Massage Envy. So I went to, I mean, pretty much today. This was my day today. You know, now that we have this all caught up, I lost my friend. I lost my boyfriend thought was a great person, now we're not really talking anymore, and then I lost my job, so now I'm trying to find a job, and so anyway, today, let's see, I got up at like 11, 10, 30, 11, I ate my breakfast, got ready to go, and then I went into, went to the interview, or I went to the library, and I got the resumes, the resume, went to the interview, and pretty much a disaster because I fucked up on my resume for one thing, I, uh, didn't, I reversed, you know, I need to correct something on my resume, I accidentally put the description down wrong on a couple of, uh, you know, the first two part, the first two job descriptions, I accidentally switched the descriptions. So I had, it, I told her about that because I didn't know if she was gonna ask me what, you know, like what I did in my previous jobs and ask me specific details about my job, jobs. So that's why I told her that I made a mistake. I just shouldn't have even told her because she didn't. Even end up asking me anyway. Um, but yeah, I don't think it went very well because we went through the questions and I was doing the answers and she's like looking at me funny the whole time. 
you know, I'm all dressed up, I'm wearing makeup, I have my hair straightened, and I th thought I looked pretty nice, you know, I'm wearing like the nicest outfit that I have, which is a blue, or which is a black, which is black slacks, um, a white lacy, a white tank top with like a lacy thing in the middle of it, which looks really nice. And it has kind of buttons, but it's not slutty at all. Like, it's very professional looking. And then I'm just wearing a black over... A black... Like, um... Jacket thing over it. So... And I had my hair straightened. I had makeup on. And thought I looked really nice. And I was being very nice and concise in my answers. And I was being very professional, I thought. So she was asking me these questions, and every time I answered the questions, you know, I thought I was giving pretty decent answers. And she's like looking at me funny the whole time while she's writing the answers down. And then at the end of the interview, she doesn't even give me a chance to, you know, she doesn't even give me a chance to ask any questions. I was going to ask if it was full-time or part-time. And she didn't even give me any, a chance to ask anything. She just, she's like, well, we have several other applicants coming in. So if uh, we are interested, we will give you a call and you can come in for a second interview. And then quickly shoved me out the door. I was like, okay, nice. Like, I don't get it because I remember her name, Jamie, um, which I am horrible at remembering names. So I was pretty impressed with myself about that. Like, I was like, hi, Jamie, nice to meet you. Because the uh, front desk person told me who I'd be meeting with. And I was like, oh, hi, Jamie, nice to meet you. You know? seemed friendly at first and then she was, as soon as I told her the thing about the resume, she was kind of a bitch. So, so yeah, anyway, yeah, that, my time's pretty much up now, but three, 33 minutes almost. And, uh, but yeah, I guess basically I don't plan on talking to Stephen month or two and um, I uh, when I do talk to him it's not going to be the same friendship that it was before I'm not going to really tell him much of anything unless it's positive I guess it's going to be my plan is like even if things are going to fucking hell in my life even if I'm homeless or something I hope not. I doubt I will. Because I have my mom's house to go to. Even if my mom, even if my life is hell, I'm still not going to let him in ever again. Because he treated me like that. So. I'm just going to be like, oh yeah, everything is fine. How's everything? Well, I'm just going to be like, you know, when I catch up with him, if things are shitty. He'll be like, oh, so what's been going on? And you're like, oh, well, you know, I live with my mom's now. And I lost, don't even say it in a negative way, just say I live with my mom's now. And then if he's like, oh, damn, what happened? Oh, I couldn't find a job. So, yeah, I'm still looking for work. But it's okay because I'm sure everything will be fine eventually. It's like, I don't know. You, I am not giving them a shroud of my soul again because he doesn't deserve it. If, if apparently I don't deserve to know the real reason why he broke up with me, then he doesn't deserve to have a shroud of my soul ever again. 
so. If I win way over our friends again, I'm not. I'm just going to be like. Yeah. I'll just be like, yeah, everything's fine. Even if it's not. So. minutes now. So yeah. I'll talk to you tomorrow. And yeah. Hope everything or I mean hopefully things are better. Computer, you are my only friend. Alright, good night. Talk to you tomorrow.